okay in the uh, last video tutorial that i put up uh, for uh, building a crank rocker uh, this is where we stopped uh, with this design of the two branches so what i'm going to do is um, now try to show you how to construct a velocity uh, triangle and i'll show you some uh, interesting things that you could do with the velocity triangle so what i'm going to do is to focus only on one branch let me move myself out uh, here and then i'm going to hide some of the uh, things so the bottom branch i'm going to hide i'm going to remove that i'm going to remove this and also hide the uh, point e which is uh, sitting here um, so that uh, basically now the focus is essentially only on um, this branch all right <clears throat> let's let's say i've frozen at this configuration now uh, this is rotating uh, o2c is rotating uh, counterclockwise and uh, for simplicity i'm going to say it's rotating at um, one radian per second so let me construct the velocity diagram for this configuration and what is the, the interesting thing that i will show is that uh, the same slider by using the idea of vectors uh, we can now you know uh, move this alpha and then get uh, the velocity diagram for different configurations without having to do any additional work once we construct that velocity triangle so how are we going to construct we know that uh, the velocity of point c is going to be perpendicular to o2c and in this direction because omega 2 is anti clockwise so so the first thing that we do is we'll uh, set the origin of uh, the velocity diagram at an arbitrary uh, location so let me just choose that so i'm going to just put that uh, somewhere and then we can move that around so that is f i will call that uh, let me rename that again go back to the arrow and then pick that um, we'll make it a slightly smaller one which is 4 uh, and now i'm going to call that as ov the origin of uh, the velocity diagram so that is what i'm going to nomenclature that so that is my origin of the uh, op oops we will uh, sorry uh, i think uh, we'll stop the animation here uh, <coughs> okay i uh, i think we were at 214 degrees if i'm not mistaken to 12 or 213 to 14 that is where we were when this uh, started to move around on its own okay so ov is out there and uh, as i said 1 uh, radian per second 1 and a half so i'll use the same scale 1 uh, is to 1 uh, just for the heck of it uh, so let's um, so that means i have 1.5 cm per second and the vector is going to point that way so first uh, you can go here so the one of the uses here is that i can choose a perpendicular line and then click on this object so that line is basically perpendicular to o2c and i can just move translate this line and make it pass through ov because remember that vector is going to start from ov and then go either up or down in this case it is going to go down what is the magnitude 1 and 1/2 cm so what we do is we go say we'll use the compass and then uh, measure this uh, distance and since uh, we have decided 1 radian per second i draw that and now use the intersect command basically to uh, locate that intersection so the point of interest is basically g uh, f is if it were clockwise it will be f since it is anti clockwise it, the intersection point is g the vector will point in that way okay so we will hide the circle and the perpendicular line and the point g i am going to select and make it a smaller circle Uh, it looks very big now so let's change the size of this uh, bring it down to 4 and what we'll do is we'll call that as uh, point c because that is uh, by definition i think uh, dr manoj was using uh, the small c to to basically say oops uh, we again started moving we have to stop it here and then i want to go back to uh, 240 that is where we started our construction right uh, let me move this uh, stop all right <clears throat> so now i am going to join this by the uh, by using uh, this vector which is there rather than a segment which we used earlier so this clearly is a vector and i will use uh, we'll hide the u uh, we don't want to see the u but we want to uh, mirror the same color so we'll use green because the crank was green so we'll use green now uh, in order to complete this triangle uh, we use the fact that velocity of this point d is velocity of c plus velocity of uh, d uh, relative uh, sorry uh, velocity of uh, c uh, c rel d relative to c uh, vc plus v of d relative to c is vd vc is omega 2 cross uh, o2c 
and uh, VD of course is omega 4 cross 4 D but we don't know uh, we only know the direction at this configuration we don't know the magnitude of this similarly we know the direction of V, uh, v of uh, uh, D relative to C but we don't know what is the magnitude so we know that uh, V of D relative to C is going to be perpendicular to C D so we go back uh, now look at our perpendicular line say okay all right uh, what is perpendicular to this this line is perpendicular now remember where does it where do, where will i put this line i will make it pass through c because it's a relative velocity line so i am going to put that at c so it could start at c go that way or this way we don't know uh, which direction it will head at this point of time similarly uh, the absolute velocity vector o 4 d v d uh, is going to be perpendicular to uh, o 4 d so again i can use the perpendicular line command and if i draw a perpendicular so you can see this line is perpendicular to o 4 d i now make it pass through o v because all absolute velocities will have to start uh, or end there right so now you can see the intersection basically gives me the point uh, small d so i can use the intersect command again click on this object click on this object and the intersection G uh, we will go back and uh, call this, uh, this G we will reduce in size uh, bring it down to 4 um, then call this small d <coughs> alright so that completes uh, the vector triangle of course uh, sorry uh, we seem to be uh, let me stop that and let me move uh, the angle back to 2 to alright so you can see that uh, already there is a certain dynamic thing that I can do with the velocity triangle as you can see uh, I think 214 is where we, are, uh, we were using fine alright so uh, now uh, we can remove these perpendicular lines uh, line segments I will hide where are they uh, we have to go down a little bit uh, let me come down we hide the perpendicular line now what we do is uh, we use the vector and uh, the direction of the vector from OV to D and we will choose the appropriate color uh, which is uh, purple to say that the output uh, thing and then uh, this vector will go from C to D and, and that vector we will color it as blue because that corresponds to the coupler uh, the relative velocity in this part of it so this is a simple velocity uh, triangle that I have com uh, uh, completed now the interesting thing is that uh, I don't have to go and reconstruct for every configuration if you were to do this with pencil and paper that is one of the difficulties that you will have uh, you already got glimpse of what I was trying to do um, uh, you, you could see that uh, the, the uh, animation kept turning on uh, every now and then now let me just work you through uh, so let me see if I go to say an arbitrary position like 108 degrees so you see that uh, this is 108 the velocity vector is pointing like this and now you can you can see this is the velocity polygon so and I go to uh, now come back this also rotates uh, along with that and now I go to 230 260 so you can see that effectively I am moving around and you can see the vectors are changing in size as I go around what what happens interestingly so you see uh, one of the rocker extreme positions uh, we are reaching now you can see that D has now approached V, OV. So that means VD is basically zero. So this tells you that the rocker is at one of the extreme positions, right? Which happens around 308 degrees. You go further, you can see that it's it's going out of scale. Uh, I will I will of course uh, shrink it and then show you the full uh, vector pol I mean the triangle as it goes through. Now you can see that the velocities have increased and they are kind of going out of. Uh, uh, the screen that is out here uh, and then it will again come back down so it actually becomes quite large in this configuration and then uh, effectively you will see that as I bring it back up it, it kind of reduces in size so so it kind of shrinks and uh, becomes larger as we go along so what I am going to do is to kind of uh, uh, zoom out so that you can see the full range uh, you can see the scales changing of course in some uh, things it is too small the velocity triangle will be uh, small to see but in other things uh, it may be easier to see okay let me try this out uh, and see if this would uh, give us uh, so let me click and let it run you can see now the animation this is the crank rocker animation and that is the velocity triangle animation so you can see D is going to OV so that's when they are collinear it goes through that and then it increases then uh, you get this uh, big uh, swipe again we are missing it it's outside the circle 
then it again comes back out so let me maybe move this uh, a little bit uh, let me um, pull this out here i think this may help us uh, we may be able to capture let's let's try that right around 0 degrees is where the maximum vd happens omega 4 uh, is is quite large around that and of course the relative velocity is also quite large <coughs> so d is now uh, 0 and then it again builds up yeah, I think we have been able to capture that. So you can see that, uh, so a very nice uh, animation of the velocity diagram. So I think uh, this is something I myself.